evening, everyone. Thank you for joining on a Sunday uh, for this uh, wonderful session by Mr. Shrikant Ayer. Um, so I'll just give you a backdrop about uh, why we're doing this session. So, so we are an organization called Samayu. And uh, we at Samayu envision a revolution in India's food system, cultivating a future where all beings thrive. And we drive a transition towards a climate-resilient, plant-forward society ensuring no community of humans or non-humans is left behind in this transformation. You can check out our website on the message. Um, also, why we're doing uh, what we're doing is because we see our world as interconnected, where the well-being of humans, animals, and the planet depends on one another. Samayu promotes inclusivity and practical solutions to systematic issues, highlighting the intrinsic value of every life. So under Samayu, we have two wings. One is the farming wing and the consumer wing. And with the farming wing, we work with the farmers in Madhya Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh for, for practicing regenerative agriculture and alternative protein sources. And also we leverage on the One Health approach. We engage with stakeholders to foster changes that consider human health, animal well-being, and the environment. In the consumer side of it, we'd like to uh, address the importance of the plant-based diet through um, our 21 day dairy free challenges, the school sessions, documentary screenings, and uh, potlucks. So AMA, Ask Me Anything session, is part of the consumer wing called Food and You. And uh, we are here today um, with Mr. Shrikant Ayer to talk about the holistic well-being uh, in terms of mental health space um, and in general plant-based uh, lifestyle as well. So without further ado, let me welcome Mr. Srikant and give a small brief about him. Srikant Ayer, based in Nami, Mumbai, Maharashtra, is a dedicated psychotherapist and wellness consultant who specializes in corporate health strategies. Embracing the plant-based lifestyle since 2017, Srikant has actively promoted the benefits of this diet through his professional practice and personal advocacy. His significant contributions include his role as an associate producer and cinematographer for the acclaimed 2023 documentary Makadu, where he also lent his voice for the English narration. Passionate about the power of collective action, Srikant advocates for a critical reassessment of our reliance on animal products, championing a vision for a sustainable, balanced, and healthier future free from lifestyle diseases. So, Mr. Srikant, the stage is yours. Please to give us a brief introduction about yourself. Thank you so much, Anushri. Thank you to the team of Samayu for uh, organizing something uh, such as this on a regular basis to help individuals uh, from different, you know, uh, sections of the society, different uh, walks of life to come in here and share from their wealth of experiences, their lived experiences, and what they do as well. You know, apart from uh, uh, only being, uh, you know, plant-based advocates. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, I have been into the mental health field uh, right from the get-go, right from my post-graduation. So that's been about eight years I have been uh, working in the space of wellness. I would like to call it wellness, mental wellness or holistic wellness, you know. Uh, so it's been a... a growing journey uh, since the time i started it was 2016 and in 2017 i stumbled upon the vegan movement through documentaries so uh, documentaries such as what the health uh, cowspiracy and uh, many more that then later on followed obviously dominion uh, and and they were indeed you know talking about what's happening in the animal-based uh, industries and why we need to switch. So that's about my vegan, uh, uh, you know, plant-based journey beginning in 2017. And uh, as far as my work is concerned, I um, have uh, founded a company called Wellness Team 360 Private Limited. And uh, this company uh, specializes in helping corporates have a wellness policy in place for their employees covering uh, multiple dimensions of well-being uh, not just occupational but also physical psychological emotional spiritual uh, 
um, and all of these dimensions which often get neglected, including financial. So we have a lot of resource persons with us who work uh, as domain experts in uh, one on one settings with employees in corporates. As we all know, the happier you are as an employee, the more secure you are uh, feeling about yourself, the more productive and more uh, enriching your contributions are going to be in that particular organization. So um, my goal is to see that workplace well-being takes, uh, you know, a, a huge uh, uh, step forward, leap forward. So our company believes in innovation. So uh, we continuously learn, continuously grow on the field. And uh, apart from that, individuals, uh, I do consult uh, on uh, different age groups that I have worked with are young adolescents, middle-aged uh, adults, and young adults as well. So the range from 11 years of age to 60, 60s, these, this has been the age bracket that I have maximum worked with. You could say somewhere close to 800 uh, hours plus of one-on-one -on -one therapy interactions and a lot of uh, learnings from that as well. So yes, that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shrikant, for taking your time today. And uh, that was a beautiful introduction. So um, <clears throat> let me, um, how about we start with uh, some of the simple questions we would like to uh, put front and uh, hear your perspectives. Yeah? Great. So the first question would be, um, what inspired you to transition to a plant-based lifestyle and how has it impacted your overall well-being? Sure. Um, to answer the second half of the question, it has definitely impacted my well-being in a very positive sense. I used to have uh, symptoms of asthma. Uh, my lungs used to you know, uh, not cope too well with the dairy. I did not realize that it was dairy, dairy consumption and the kind of diet that I used to have, uh, primarily a vegetarian diet, but with a lot of milk in it, dairy products in it. And uh, I used to always have this frequent bouts of cold, cough, you know, fever, recurring asthmatic symptoms. All of that almost within six months of turning, uh, you know, uh, switching, uh, opting a plant-based uh, lifestyle, it, it disappeared for good. And I, I would say that my lung capacity is much better. My whole body feels lighter. So that's the benefits that I have personally seen. And uh, what inspired me was uh, a very heartfelt argument with someone uh, about why is it necessary, you know? Uh, so, so to say, why, how is uh, going vegan or uh, switching to a plant-based diet, how is it going to be really helpful, you know, to the, in the larger sense, uh, to our consumer culture, to, uh, uh, to the world, to animals, how is it going to impact? So I would say that that argument uh, from my side was starting with uh, reasons against. And then through the course of that argument, uh, I felt that, all right, there are so many valid points here. You know, uh, so much truth is there. And uh, my very dear friend, Harsha Atmakuri, who's also the director of uh, the film Makadood, he used to run uh, a channel previously called uh, Truth is Vegan. So, uh, and, you know, since we are in the mental health field, obviously truth plays a huge role in our own well-being, right? The more honest, more sincere we are with uh, life, the more, you know, we are able to cope well with everything that's happening. You know, we can limit delusions <laughs> of, uh, of reality. So uh, I think the truth was there somewhere and the truth inspired me to uh, practice uh, a lifestyle which has uh, lesser and lesser, you know, harm uh, uh, being done to animals. And uh, the byproduct was my health, I would say. So I did not, uh, I was not inspired just for my health. I was inspired for animals and animal uh, liberation. So. That really uh, helped me stay vegan and uh, practice this diet as well. Thank you so much for that. 
Um, so let's go to the next question. As a practicing psychotherapist and wellness consultant, how do you integrate plant-based principles into your professional practice? Sure. Um, so ahimsa is a very, very interesting uh, term. It coincides with mental health, psychotherapy, as well as with uh, in the plant-based uh, movement world over, right? It's, it's a lot about uh, causing less harm as possible. So as a mental health practitioner, uh, three things would alarm me. Uh, harm to self, potentially. Harm to others. Or harm being received from others. These are three points where uh, my uh, role becomes even more serious. My role becomes even more um, critical. So I think the understanding that we are harming uh, animals is very, very prevalent in the veganism uh, movement as well. So, uh, but in my uh, personal practice, I am more concerned with the lifestyle disorders that my clients are, you know, beginning to experience. Metabolism, metabolic syndrome, sorry, uh, hypertension, diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes. These all are proven to be preventable. Uh, preventable, reversible. And uh, in terms of critical illnesses as well, uh, since I'm associated with some hospitals uh, in the OPD uh, or the IPD, uh, a lot of critically ill patients can uh, switch to a plant-based diet and they can reap the benefits because it's uh, evidenced, uh, you know, strongly evidenced that the more we consume a whole food plant-based or a you know, a nutrition rich plant based diet, we are, our body is going to just simply thank us, you know, uh, with regards to these illnesses. Uh, very recently, I was this, uh, researching about um, how even the fibroids that are formed in the body, and many women are experiencing uh, fibroids, uh, a plant based diet can actually help reverse the size of these fibroids. And I was doing this research and I was, uh, Pleasantly, I would say I wasn't surprised. So uh, I think uh, whenever I encounter my clients experiencing uh, physical health symptoms, my first uh, recommendation, even though I'm not a nutritionist, but I have studied this, I have researched the plant-based uh, literature as well. So my first step is to, you know, hey, why don't we go easy on our uh, physical health? Why don't we take care of our body? And uh, hence. Uh, that it, it contributes to the self-care of my clients as well. So they take act uh, positive action for their own health and well-being. So that's, that's my first recommendation. Let's switch to a plant-based diet. Your body will thank you. That's wonderful. How I, can, uh, I mean, it's great that how you are implementing what you saw, what you experienced to your clients as well, and not just about the mental well-being, but also the physical well-being. I think they go, they do go hand in hand. Like if, I, if I'm fit and fine physically, uh, automatically a part of my uh, mental well-being is taken care of already. That's a great point uh, to be noted. Uh, thanks, uh, Shrikant. So my next question is uh, to do with um, the documentary that you were a part of. So in your role as an associate producer and cinematographer for Makadu, how did your involvement in the documentary shape your perspective on plant-based living? It's the most sustainable way for us to uh, pursue, uh, you know, our the way we live, right? It's the most sustainable way. I traveled uh, 16,000 kilometers uh, while shooting this film and met uh, nearly 100 individuals who are involved actively in either rescue work, either animal husbandry or advocacy for, uh, you know, animal rights. And uh, to, I mean, those who are aware of the film uh, might know uh, names such as Menika Gandhi, uh, a lot of pioneering individuals who are, who are, who are on the front line doing so much and uh, even many, many uh, animal sanctuaries as well. So. Uh, what I noticed definitely is this, that it's the most sustainable way for us to move forward. Uh, 
there is a lot of scope for uh, plant based milks to or uh, plant based products to contribute in a healthy way to our uh, you know nutritional needs uh, there was this person uh, mr uh, chetan pal uh, whom we interviewed he runs a brand called chetran from pune and uh, it was an honor to interview him he was mentioning how uh, his uh, government uh, agency that he used to work for ndtb i believe uh, sent him on a mission to uh, japan and china to study how plant based milks are contributing to the society obviously we know how uh, you know there are health differences if we really want to be uh, honest with the uh, research we can find a direct correlation between consuming living on a plant based diet and not so dairy intensive with our kind of indian uh, usual indian lifestyle where you are so dairy intensive today you know and this dairy intensivity has been a direct result out of the white revolution and the uh, the bombardment you know of marketing uh, through ads through uh, different forms you know uh, and as a, i have also studied mass communication and journalism so a lot of what we consume today is a result of the way we have been uh, um you could say uh, influenced by mass media so we consume so much milk that it was uh, never this way before that's another thing that i learned uh, just a few generations ago cows were reared in some parts of the village and those parts of the village used to consume the the milk in that particular section alone there was no uh, centralized distribution channel you know there was no preservatives involved and uh, the the milk the day dairy uh, uh, products that we used to consume milk wasn't the most highly consumed one daily we used to not get that rather the most processed naturally processed form which is ghee was the only one which was recurringly available and if you try to see even the research says that ghee is more okay for the body as compared to uh, yogurt or uh, milk on a daily basis so there's no disputing the fact that ghee has its benefits right but we are take we are talking about just uh, 40 years 50 years ago you know when this was the way we used to consume so all of this uh, was pretty interesting for me to note that the modern lifestyle was not our ancestral lifestyle you know absolutely not we used to not get packed milk ever for a daily consumption for our daily six cups of tea you know people uh, are addicted to uh, tea and coffee so and the they use milk and that milk is what is more detrimental than the tea leaves of the coffee that you are consuming so uh, i think the daily consumption uh habits came to surface and uh, i realized that if we are to sustain our own physical health and the environment as well because obviously um uh, leather industry is a by product the beef industry is a by product uh of our dairy consumption i mean they are both uh you know hand in glove uh that's how we we discovered the connection to be so strong they are interdependent industries the dairy industry feeds the meat industry so and that feeds a whole lot of problems otherwise you know red meat has its own uh, you know contributions to ill health globally and we know that so sustainability is the biggest takeaway from this film and uh, you know it's it's been an opportunity rather to to be able to witness it first hand and dispel the myths that i used to encounter when i used to speak to people about plant based or vegan i used to encounter ye sab india mein nahi hota hai ye sab uh, india ki stories nahi ye sab west se aaya hai western uh, you know ways of uh, dairy might be you know or a1 the way they like to say hybrid uh, they are the problem a2 is not the problem but this is not true i also discovered that a2 milk 
actually has come from an Australian uh, company called the A2 Milk Company. They researched and told us that there is something called as A2. And uh, it, it, it is completely, it's like if I own a research company uh, or a brand of A2, you know, I am researching and I am publishing the research work. So that is the only literature that's available on the proof of A2 is better. Milk is not better. That's there. Wow, uh, that's an interesting perspective. And thanks for sharing it. I mean, um, I think Makadu documentary has done a lot of, um, you know, impact for individuals. And uh, to something as someone like me who also watched documentaries coming from the American perspective and the West perspective, uh, couldn't um, see that what is exactly the reality of India and Mark Ardut documentary did exactly that. And I'm so grateful on behalf of the entire community for, uh, you know, presenting that to us, uh, to the world and winning so many accolades uh, on the making of the documentary. So thank you and congratulations on that as well. Congratulations uh, to you as well, because you also played a, uh, you know, part in the documentary. Uh, Anushri was also one of the people who was interviewed and uh, uh, made her contributions definitely. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. You. Um, for uh, people here, we have put the uh, thank you, Shubham. He has put a link of the documentary. Please to have a uh, yeah. look at it. And um, no, it's around two hours. Uh, take off your two hours and do watch the documentary. It's very impactful, uh, very insightful about what happens, uh, you know, in, in the dairy industry in India. <clears throat> Great. Um, I would like to move on to the next question now. Um, so, uh, Shrikant, how do you envision the role of collective action in advocating for more sustainable and plant-based lifestyle on a broader scale? I think uh, organizations such as yours uh, play, play a huge role in this, uh, you know, uh, trying to uh, partner with government uh, bodies to help them understand how uh, uh, a larger contribution can be made to public health, right? Public health and even uh, agricultural, uh, in the agricultural space, so much potential exists. Uh, so I had, I had started to speak about how Chetan Pal visited uh, Japan, but I didn't finish that, uh, uh, you know, what he discovered and how he was, uh, uh, his findings were suppressed because uh, he found out that so uh, producing soy milk can be really uh, cheap and it can be an, uh, a, a far more greater source of uh, nutrition for public uh, consumption. So, and we were in a nutritional crisis and yet, uh, you know, that research and those findings and those uh, submissions were uh, suppressed. So uh, the reason was dairy industry or dairy farmers would get hurt. Even today, that's the same narrative that we uh, tend to listen to. So I think collective action is to shape the narrative as well, is to uh, raise awareness through facts. And the facts are plenty, uh, thanks to organizations like yours. Uh, uh, and we have more and more organizations mobilizing you know, the resources to either uh, fund activism, fund uh, research, uh, fund businesses, you know, or create that ambience for uh, uh, thriving uh, plant-based businesses. I'm seeing such a huge growth in just the last, you know, five years. Just the last five years, it's been a phenomenal growth uh, in the plant-based industry. And so I feel even those entrepreneurs and those uh, involved in the plant-based industry need to start, you know, speaking more about what they do and why they do it. Uh, it would it would go a long way in helping people uh, just become aware through facts because I think truth is vegan and truth can be uh, a, a great uh, tool to motivate someone to you know create change for themselves. Right. Great. Thanks. So thank you for that insight, uh, Shrikant. Um, I would like to just divert a little bit. Um, you know, the topic of your expertise that is mental uh, well-being. Uh, you know, we, we did see that um, the lot of spike in, uh, you know, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, mental challenges uh, during the COVID. And um, uh, what what were, uh, you know, how 
how did it help you uh, help your clients uh, you know about this entire during covid uh, situation and even now prevailing in uh, you know certain generations uh, about you know uh, isolation or about um, you know uh, coping with working from home uh, and things like that so what are your little bit of uh, tips and tricks for a better mental well being well thank you for the question um differs from different age groups uh, today we are seeing the younger generation uh, kind of uh, struggling to make uh, you know uh, social connection uh, it's it begins at home because of our parents uh, you know uh, being working parents mostly both parents are quite busy occupied and uh, we are also seeing uh, the dependency on uh, you know gadgets and internet use getting problematic so uh problematic use of internet is one among the youth among the younger population uh of course you have gaming disorders as well and a lot of other uh <clears throat> extreme you could say uh, um challenges that some of the youth face especially post covid uh this has exacerbated people are more dependent on uh, technology and sometimes sometimes healthy but mostly unhealthy if you if you look at the younger population you know they not they not aware and even parents are struggling to you know decide and decode this uh, uh, puzzle as to how much is okay all right and i think that's just a generation we are going through this we we don't know for sure how much is okay and what's what's going to happen uh, with young adults i think uh, early on uh, there is a there is a pattern to uh that's observed that uh, we start to prioritize only uh, our financial or occupational at the cost of our physical psychological emotional or even spiritual so i feel uh, one of the uh, tools that i often use is a multi dimensional model of well being assessing all the dimensions and reminding ourselves that each dimension matters it's like uh, you you can't do away with physical health and feel well you can't do away with psychological health and feel well uh obviously you can't do away with occupational health and feel well occupational well being also plays a, cru a crucial role but it's about balance and uh, i love that your organization also re somewhere re brings balance and represents balance right some so uh, even ayurveda speaks of the same uh, uh balance is what is health swastha comes from samatva so young uh, adults are struggling to prioritize themselves they are uh, you know what lasts longer at uh, you know uh, our uh, <clears throat> even social relationships among youth today uh, even young adults is getting uh, far more complex because of the nature of our uh, you know social media networking and uh, there's a lot of diversity but at the same time there are a lot of silos so people are falling into some uh, uh, you know buckets and another issue that i keep seeing is uh, self diagnosis and diagnosing others you know while not being a mental health practitioner we're just throwing uh, disorders at each other's face so you're too ocd or you're too this is depression or etc and uh, lastly one uh, aspect that does scare me a little is our hyper dependence on quick fixes uh as a psychotherapist i know the value of sitting down taking stock of everything that's happening acknowledging that there is immense of strife or challenge that's going on right now and talking about it right sharing it in a safe non judgmental manner what i'm seeing a lot of is a hyper dependence on uh, popping pills which is very similar to the other you know illnesses how do we cope with illnesses otherwise again an unhealthy way is to just depend on medicine medication while doing nothing while changing nothing this is a disturbing thing for me today because i am uh, beginning to see that there is a normali normalization of prescribed medications for uh, in the mental health space among extremely young population as well so we are starting very young for disorders like uh, you know adhd for example for disorders like anxiety we are starting very very young and uh, i 
Personally, I'm not convinced whether this is a healthy trend for our population because we can see what it has done in America itself. When we when we study when we see look at how drug dependent America has become for mental health, we, we are not uh, you know there is no good news over there. It's all you know quite complex. That's a unhealthy uh, a trend that I'm seeing and I'm concerned about. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Shikant. Um, if I can add a sub question to that question, um, I saw that on your, um, um, you know, on your Instagram page, uh, you mentioned something about a thriving community, thrive community. So could you uh, brief something about that? Like, um, like how do you, um, uh, why are you having this uh, community, and what is the impact that you have seen by having? these uh, community uh, platforms you could just uh, you know show uh, throw some light on it thank you for bringing that up uh, thriving souls is uh, one of my uh, projects which i started this year and uh, it's a community support group but a very unique one our objective is to uh, discover what is thriving right what is uh, what does it mean to have positive health positive well being what does it mean? Uh, we we often get stuck in ill health. You know the the, the diagnostic uh, part of it is always uh, about uh, abnormal health, abnormal psychology. So I also study positive psychology and the research from that uh, area, and it tells me very clearly that we need to also advocate for what awesomeness in terms of mental health seems like or feels like. You know. So Thriving Souls community is a space where a lot of people who lead healthy lives um, and you could say that uh, they have they've been fortunate enough of uh, to in order to flourish in their lives. They could be it could be at any age, you know, starting from young adulthood, right all the way up to senior, uh, older adulthood, uh, people who have battled cancer, people who have, uh, you know, created amazing enterprises. Uh, we invite them as well as the general population. A lot of people come in to into the space of uh, sharing, listening, and uh, developing that uh, mindfulness, that uh, restfulness, and compassion towards each other. And I think it's it's completely compassion based, so compassion led. And uh, I another reason for me to start this kind of a community. In Navi Mumbai was uh, that we're, we're seeing that groups when we meet in groups there are a lot of judgments there are a lot of uh, you know hesitations we cannot be vulnerable we can't just express what we are going through because we don't know how it will be used or how it will be interpreted or whether we will get some criticism for it so these kind of safe spaces we didn't have any and I felt the need to you know uh, bring uh some place and we do it at uh, uh, a vegan friendly uh, cafe here in uh, belapur so it's a growing community we are about 25 people hopefully someday we'll be online so that amit from uh, you know uh scotland did you say yeah could also probably you know have a, have a look at what this uh, space has to offer yeah no i will surely i'll visit belapur it's not that far from my house I see our seawoods actually. Where in Belapur, if I may ask? Uh, it's Earth Soul Cafe, sector sector fifteen. Sector fifteen. Okay. I'll I'll check. It. I'll surely. I'll be in touch with you. <laughs> yeah, it's an open community. Uh, so, Anushree, we we don't have any barriers for mm -hmm. entry. Anyone, everyone uh, from any walk of life is welcome. It's yeah. completely open to diversity as well as. Uh, inclusivity one of what you also your organization also stands for so uh, i feel thriving needs to be a subject which we discuss deliberate and meditate upon in order to actualize in our own life you know to have embody that thriving so um, there was a smile on my face when you were introducing samayu and you used the word thriving so i was like yes <laughs> yeah that that's beautiful uh, shrikant so hope your initiative uh, thrives and uh, you're getting more, uh, you expand your community and create more uh, non judgmental space uh, for people to share, uh, you know, their, 
vulnerabilities and being accepted uh, you know in the in social setting um thank you for that thank you so before i um i go off i have two more questions for you uh, one is uh, what advice would you offer to individuals or communities looking to transition to a more plant based lifestyle considering both personal and systematic challenge hmm so i feel now is the time right uh there is a very famous uh, spiritual thinker uh someone who i look up to a lot his name is eckhart tolle um i love his work i follow his work very closely and he's emphasized on the power of now his most famous uh, uh you know book uh, it's an international best seller so i think the best time is right now if you want to explore uh the plant based uh, lifestyle there are so many resources so many people in fact i feel that if you shout i am looking for answers in the society there will be someone you know it's the the awareness has come to that point at least uh, there was a time when i went to restaurants i had to explain to them what not to do what to do and these days they're very intuitive they're like okay we understand you know what's happening what your needs are of course this awareness is more in the urban cities as compared to probably uh, rural parts of india uh, um so yeah i would say um this uh, time right now is the best time if you're looking to explore and uh, the variety that you have you know to in terms of uh, uh, even just tofu you've got so many varieties of tofu to consume uh, tofu being my favorite after paneer right paneer uh, was uh, used to be something that i used to consume um and tofu is much better and now with the variety that it comes in it trumps the you know paneer any day uh so i would say uh use this movement it's only going to get better easier to uh live and uh, uh you know live a plant based lifestyle it's very easy today um as compared to just about 6 7 8 years ago uh, at that time it wasn't so easy to you know buy groceries on uh, and specifically you know uh, say vegan and get these many options it was never easy but it's way more easy today and uh, we should explore this and see for ourselves what the benefits are here for uh, us and the world perfect yeah that that absolutely makes sense um, even when i turned plant based 10 years back it was not very really easy not have any uh, you know uh, resources at our disposal and even now if you see even just apps like swiggy and blinkit they have plant based option that says that you know something is uh, you know growing uh, in the in the plant based movement and it's becoming popular is getting its attention that it deserves and was due for all these years and um, Uh, and i think swiggy reported there was a 200% increase in uh, orders of plant based diet so you know this is the moment we were looking forward for as happening uh, you know and uh, absolutely it's it's more convenient right now than ever before uh, especially in india yeah the um, movement is heading towards thriving <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's correct so before i uh, uh, request audience to ask the question i have one last uh, for you that is um, looking ahead shrikant what are your aspirations and goals for further promoting plant based living and holistic well being mental well being in the future so i am not into policy research work but this uh, one uh, aspect of you know having uh, um no gst on the dairy industry or very little gst on the dairy industry as compared to charging extremely high rates of gst for other you know uh, plant based uh, sectors plant based uh, you know agricultural products i feel we should have an intensive uh, pressure on the government to get us uh, to an equal playing field and let the consumers choose which products they want to go for because if we really charge more for uh, you know from the farmers obviously we're going to end up paying more for a better lifestyle so this is the first and the biggest hurdle which i feel in india we need to uh cross and if we do cross that i think it will be very easy we will start to see a decline in the dairy consumption 
and the dairy industry will transition so it will transition people who are farming dairy products will farm plant based products it's as simple as that so where there is a dairy farmer you have to imagine there is an almond farmer soy farmer you know peanut farmer and uh, you know oats farmer all of these farmers are going to stand to benefit and this industry is going to expand it's going to be better for your environment better for the pockets of the farmer because trust me none of the dairy farmers who i met in 16000 kilometers were happy they were not happy farmers oh, forget the animals the farmers weren't happy they were crunched they had they had to deal with illnesses of their animals in a very ruthless way they just would not be able to cope with any illness that the animal goes through it's neglected the animal is in severe pain and all those diseases and all that distress is coming through into the food that we are consuming so don't be surprised if consuming uh, dairy or animal products is leading to a lot of you know uh, uh, de deterioration in your own uh, health and well being because uh, we know about stress hormones right cortisol it gets pulled up into muscles or it gets pulled up into all of the products that come out Uh, of all the secretions as well so we need to be mindful of uh, what energy we are consuming and uh, all of this i think becoming more mindful requires phenomenal activism uh, on the part of uh, yeah. citizens because plant based movement is the only movement which i feel is a truly people's movement people's movement for something that is not just about humans right it's about uh, animals and uh, it's about nature it's about reconnecting with nature and respecting nature and giving it its due you know and that's the reason why the popularity among people world over people and it's it's uh, not at all surprising to see that uh, the, uh, empathetic human beings are able to come up and uh, you know challenge the status quo no matter which country they're in in india it's no different i think we need to challenge the status quo of the dairy getting those benefits it should not get benefits in fact there's a lot of cruelty there you charge them more uh, uh, that would be better you know uh, uh, but yeah these are a few hopes and dreams uh, in the near future and i can see that happening uh, as time passes by absolutely that makes sense uh thank you uh, shrikant i would right now uh, would like to open the floor to the audience uh, if you have any questions uh, to shrikant please uh, is your time talking about farmer and their mental well being and their financial crunch as well in makadud also we we see that right how much they are getting offered for each animal and subsidy and all is does it really help i believe farmers should get a subsidy but not for that animal for uh, making a planty machine or something like that they they should be like they, there is a uh, ujwala the cylinder revolution that modi government did so something like a planty machine you give it to every farmer they make their own uh, soya milk or almond milk or whatever that they grow and uh, make it like amul that uh, the revolution right it was a people's cooperative movement right each farmer in each village has his own distribution network you don't have to transport anything anywhere you take care of your own village right whatever 10 15 20 kilometers of radius that is easily possible you give them the strength and they'll be able to do it and if we could simulate some numbers that this is this is how much goes into uh, building this machine and this is how much they can uh, earn and this is their return on investment right say for example if the machine costs somewhere about 30000 rupees right and uh, within uh, say 6 months they are they start earning profits out of it and that too they are getting subsidy out of it or something like that right yeah. you you make organic you give healthy you reduce your food print uh, is better for the climate is better for the best for the animals so something like that if we could uh, work on something proposed to menaka gandhi or yeah whoever you think we could and we should do that i think 100% 100% thank you 
Yeah. Because what is uh, what I see such kind of products are going onto the retail level, uh, like individual customers, you know, users buying it won't really wo pada rahega, like a mixer grinder or a food processor in some corner of the house, right? But if uh, unless someone makes it and delivers to their home, nothing like that. True. Yeah. If anyone can do it, farmers can. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that, uh, uh, Mr. Amit. That was an interesting uh, you know, perspective about uh, decentralized approach for plant-based uh, milk production. You know, it, it, honestly, I've also been thinking about the same uh, concept yeah. for years right now. Uh, but yeah, I think um, I think people, I think I think we are moving towards it slowly but surely. Uh, is what I feel. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you for that question as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, your organization, what you could do is talk to take interviews of farmers or ask them questions. Do you think if you get this option, would you opt for it? And mm. when we have that kind of statistics ready with us, that these right. many number of farmers are ready to opt in. And now mm. let's do it. Then it will accelerate. Like that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think we would this the movement requires these kind of ideas and uh, you know how we can create more impact. Uh, yeah. Definitely when I also connect with you, uh, Amit, uh, very soon on yeah. uh, offline. Um, thank you so much for that question as well. I was well. listening to uh, VCOP, Vegan uh, Cop uh, yesterday, Dr. Sailesh Rao, and uh, uh, there was a question by another uh, participant. Uh, what does the uh, vegan movement want or what do the vegan product makers want? It, it went to Ford. Uh, if you asked uh, the customer, Henry Ford said, they would have asked for faster horses, right? And he built a car and he promoted the car and that's how car automobile industry started and right. went ahead, right? So over here, in the name of sustainability, uh, what uh, people think they want is sustainable and humane meat. They don't mm. want humane meat. They don't want sustainable meat. They, they want something that tastes good, right? And True. yeah, go for plant based. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, I think recently uh, with Samayu as a team, we also uh, approached a Supreme Court uh, canteen. So we're including the plant based uh, meal, uh, you know, uh, in, in the lines of, you know, including plant based meal, Supreme Court. I think slowly that acceptably is building up. I think it's uh, the matter of time. I think. If I just take from today to a decade from now, I think there's going to be a significant uh, improvement in this sector. And uh, who, who knows, even the idea that you're talking about may come into fruition. Uh, I think we see that in uh, Thailand and uh, all these uh, South, uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries where they do supply coconut milk and soy milk you know, just in the streets, uh, just like uh, you know, regular milk. So I, I think that model can also be replicated now in India as well, uh, considering the abundance of uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, materials that we have, uh, which is soy milk or, uh, you know, coconut, it's uh, available all the time, all through the year for us. Yeah, so yeah, I agree. Have, totally agree. Like that shapes in here. The, the core of dairy is they have linked it to religion and they have really uh, linked it to uh, our ancient practices, which is obviously false, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when I search for uh, dairy industry or white revolution, uh, all I get is images of uh, Prince Charles in Amul's factory in uh, uh, 80s, 1980s. And the first batch of butter is coming out and Prince Charles is standing in his safari. It's a black and white photo available on Wikipedia. And you'll see Varghese Kurian is there and uh, they're all standing. So is dairy our invention or is it Western then? And if we are so against Western, why are we using internet? Why are we using... <laughs> Apple and Android, and uh, why are we using cars as well? Right? Yeah. So we are selective about, uh, yeah, this is Western, veganism is Western, and we shouldn't accept. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, last year uh, at Irish Vegan Festival, uh, I was listening to Cliff Grant. He's an Irish person, never been to India, and he starts his presentation with Satyagraha and ends it on Ahimsa. And he talks about what does this word mean? What is Satya? What is Agraha? And uh, in his foreign English accent or Irish accent. And I'm sitting, wow. an Indian is sitting, and the rest all Gora people are watching him. And I'm texting my Indian <laughs> friends, taking a clip. And see, this, this person never visited India. And he's giving credit of veganism to India. Mm. Right? He's talking about that. And you say veganism is a Western concept. People in West are crediting India as. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah, I think it goes uh, hand in hand. I think uh, everything that India has uh, generated uh, has gotten the credit from the West, uh, I guess. So, yeah. you know, I think it's still in, in vogue right now. <laughs> but yeah, that, thank you for sharing that. Uh, you know, uh, Yeah, I think we, we, we definitely um, uh, see that in, in India, there's so much prevalent practices about Ahimsa and uh, not hurting other animals uh, or the beings, uh, you know, uh, as such. Um, I think we have to go back to roots now. It's time for us to go back to roots and uh, you know, understand where we're coming from. Uh, thank you so much, Amit, for so much involvement and sharing uh, so many things. Uh, this is what makes us pleasure, think, yeah. you know, immersive, getting all the different perspectives. And uh, I would also like to uh, take this time to um, thank Shrikant for taking his time and um, coming here uh, and addressing um, um, our gathering here and uh, talking about, you know, having a nice interconnected uh, interconnected between mental well-being and uh, you know um, physical well-being as well uh, i think it's very important aspect uh, right now for our current society most of us are working from home nobody's going to office and uh, you know i think all these uh, definitely plays an uh, important role uh, to be mentally and physically fit um, so um, uh, we also uh, like to give you a, a good luck for your endeavors in your uh, thriving uh, soul community and wellness team 360 as well. Keep doing the great job that you're doing. Uh, thank you so much uh, for today's time. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you.